Binge the full week of The Ray Taylor Show ad free over at inspireddisorder.com slash plus. This is The Ray Taylor Show. Dave, season one, episode two, Dave's first. This is a episode where we see Dave perform uh, or get, at least get invited to perform his first ever live performance. In the last episode, we found out that Dave's never even rapped for his girlfriend, despite the fact that he has a video, a YouTube video, with over 15 million views. Uh, so somebody that's kind of coming at the rap game uh, backwards in a lot of ways. Uh, getting all the hype and getting all the followers first before actually putting in the work and going on tour. Uh, which, for me, how would I know? Maybe he's going the right direction. Either way, this is Dave's first. This episode starts off, oh, by the way, before I get into it, uh, if you're watching this episode for the first time uh, or listening to it, I this is where I break down every episode of the TV show Dave. Uh, which is a FX show starring Little Dicky, Dave Bird, uh, written, directed by uh, him. And uh, it's also on Hulu. There are two seasons available. Uh, so if you don't want to be spoiled on this show, I highly recommend going to check out the show, uh, watch the show. And if you want to listen to me break down the episode afterwards, that is what this show is for. Uh, so let's get into it. Spoilers and all. Uh, this one we start off with Dave in the supermarket with Gata, with Mike, trying to get shampoo. Dave's trying to get shampoo. He doesn't know. Very indecisive, Dave. He doesn't know there's, you know, shampoo, four-in-one shampoo. The, the reality of a four-in-one shampoo, body wash, conditioner, all of these things existing in one bottle is, is too much for him to comprehend. Uh, and as all supermarkets do, they have the, the push for assistance uh, because certain things at a supermarket have to be locked up. You have to have uh, special uh, access to certain products in a grocery store that you need to have an employee come help you out. I've been on both sides of this situation, working at Costco for over a decade, and then also just being a human being who buys groceries uh, for my entire life. And I understand how annoying that whole procedure is. Nobody likes it. It's not the most convenient way to purchase things in a store, but that's not what Dave is ringing the bell for. Dave wants to know what a good shampoo is which is something you don't do. For anybody going to a grocery store, you, you need to be self-informed because, let me tell you, employees at a grocery store don't know. They don't have your answer. They don't, unless they just happened to have done the research prior. They had the same question, and they went through and did their own research but don't, don't expect to be well-informed by any employee at a grocery store as to the effectiveness of one shampoo versus the other. Of course, Gata is more into the natural shampoos. He's never bothered with this stuff. It's ridiculous that Dave is even having this kind of issue. The guy that comes over and helps obviously has no help for him. For some reason, his name Jesus, or his, his I mean, his, his name is Jesus. It's not pronounced Jesus. It's just Jesus, which is clearly indicative of the fact that this show is a comedy. I don't think I've ever met somebody named Jesus that didn't go by Jesus. Everybody goes by Jesus. I've never, never, never. I mean, obviously, if you're like third generation, fourth generation, sure, very common name in the Latin community to name your kid Jesus. But nobody has to hear that in English. Nobody hears Jesus in English. It's like Cher. Nobody's naming their kid Cher. Nobody's naming their kid Madonna. 
Like that name was locked down by a person, and that's like that's just that's that person. You can't name some kid working at a grocery store Jesus and expect him like he guaranteed that kid. The reality of this grocery store worker is that on a daily basis, people call him Jesus. On a daily, multiple times a day, for as long as he works at that grocery store, like the majority of people who look at his name tag and, and refer to his, him by his name are calling him Jesus. But he still, he hasn't gotten the idea that you just, why correct somebody? Who cares? You're never going to see him again. Don't worry about Dave. He got it wrong. Just let him go with Jesus. You don't need to correct him. But but he but he's uh you know he does. It's Jesus. And of course, Mike, super excited, super excited to help Dave tackle his back knee issue. Dave has some back acne brought up in the beginning of the first episode when he was at the doctor's office, gave him no help. Mike, being a best friend, being a good friend is excited, is excited, he got some new products, he's excited to help Dave get rid of those blemishes on his back. Very excited. Uh, then we cut to a school play. He's, you know, at a school play, his girlfriend, Dave's girlfriend, uh, whose name is Allie, is a kindergarten teacher. They have this play going on about the environment, very woke subject, very, uh, very uh, of the time, maybe, maybe a few generations too late, actually, probably. Uh, but there's this play that he's going to attend to be a good boyfriend. Dave's trying to be a good boyfriend. So after the play, she asks him how it goes. And the problem Dave has is that Dave is in his head as an artist constantly and that doesn't always adapt well to normal everyday questions like the one Allie asks how did the play go and somebody that's in their own head about just overly critiquing everything that he sees creatively whether it's what he puts out or somebody else puts out can't help but be overcritical of these kids who put on a play about the environment it doesn't mesh. It doesn't mesh very well. It's like he's in a different reality than everybody else. But thankfully, there's a kid who died. And this kid, John, was a big fan of Little Dicky. So the parents, Dave goes over to, to, you know, say condolences to the parents. And the parents ask him to perform at a memorial event that's going on. And of course, Dave accepts, doesn't know anything about the kid. The parents say that they're going to send him some information. So that's what this episode is about. Dave preparing to do a performance at a, at a memorial for a kid who died. We don't know how he died. Kids sometimes die. That is what happened in the show. A kid died for some unknown reason. There's no investigation, so no foul play was involved. But still, a kid is dead. But that's not, that's not what's on Dave's mind. I mean, it is, but it's, 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 fr it's, it's from the perspective of Dave, who's in his head, who's overly critical, who also has no experience doing a live event. And for anybody that's never done a thing or who, or who has tried to do something for the first time, what generally happens when you're trying to do something, whether it's creative or not creative, is that you will inevitably overthink every aspect of what's happening. You will, you will second guess. You, will be, you, you, you won't know where to start. You won't know where to end. You don't know where's in the middle. Because you don't have any experience. He doesn't have any experience. He doesn't know what's going on. The parents barely, like, they know Little Dicky, but they don't know his music. 
they're not familiar with him. Obviously, he got he gets uh, compared to the the kid also like Macklemore, you know, into white rappers apparently. The Many Faces is an ongoing abstract ink portrait series that I started many years ago. I release a new face every day, but go to inspireddisorder.com to check them out. So many available. But as a listener to The Ray Taylor Show, you can save 10% when you use coupon code INSPIRED when you check out. So go to inspireddisorder.com slash TMF. That stands for The Many Faces. Go check them out. Browse the entire collection. And when you decide on a piece or maybe multiple pieces, make sure you use coupon code INSPIRED when you check out and you'll save 10%. As a big thank you for checking out my work, for collecting my work, and for listening to The Ray Taylor Show. And with that said, let's get back to the show. But Dave was there. Macklemore wasn't there. So Dave gets, gets the invite from the parents that are out of touch. Out of touch parents. I mean, parents are out of touch. I, have a, I don't have kids. Let's just put that out there right now. But I have friends that have kids. And the stuff that their their kids are into, so, like, there's probably been a decade of my life where I just don't know who people are in popular culture anymore. Like, I am an old man. I am 41, and I am officially an old man. And I've been an old man for longer than I probably even know. But one of the major signs of that is not having any idea what kids are into. So I don't necessarily blame the parents of John. But let me tell you, they are out of touch. I would probably be more in touch if I had a kid. Probably I would be interested in who these people are and what they do. But these parents are. Which is fine. Um... Dave cut back Dave they're cut back to uh Allie's apartment where Dave is freaking out. He's like offended that he was even asked, he was put on the spot to perform. Like how inappropriate that is that the parents just ask him out of nowhere to perform for the son and he doesn't know the son. And we get introduced for the first time to Allie's roommate, Emma who is on her computer working, gets surprised by Dave, who's trying to find some somebody to agree with him that they were out of line. She doesn't really help much. But still, we're finally introduced to Emma for the first time, which we see her throughout this episode. She's, she's shooting video. Um, you know, you, 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 not really we haven't really gotten to know emma too much this episode doesn't really introduce us too much to emma we do see l's again uh later dave goes back to the um oh before that when he's talking when he's upset about these parents taking him he also is offended with people constantly comparing him to or grouping him with macklemore and that is what Emma does. She looks up on Spotify or whatever and sees that, like, related artists to Little Dicky is, like, uh, Lonely, the, the Lonely Island Club guys. I, that's definitely not the name of them. The SNL rap group. Uh, Macklemore. And I think maybe she rattled off some more. But Little Dicky doesn't like that. He likes to think of himself in a category all of his own. The comparisons he's not happy with. He's not happy with the comparisons, especially since, you know, Macklemore. I think a lot of people consider Macklemore to be. They don't really have the respect uh, that I'm sure Lil Dicky Dave wants to have as a rapper. A lot of people don't give Macklemore that kind of respect for whatever reason. I enjoy Macklemore. I like his, his music. It's very poppy, very catchy. I enjoy it, but I could see how people wouldn't like, you know, it's uh, whatever. They look down upon it or whatever. So that 
would also kind of, uh, I would imagine, add to the frustration of Dave being compared to somebody like that. Somebody that, that might be considered like a sellout, which I don't know if people consider Macklemore a sellout or not. But there's definitely like a bias that people have towards Macklemore. And uh, I'm sure that's uh, part of why Dave uh, doesn't appreciate the comparison. So then cut to Dave is at the studio with Els. Uh, going through some beats. He's trying to find a beat that works for this song that he has to write about John, who just died, who likes Macklemore also. And they're going through beats, and they finally find one, which I appreciate. I like that scene. Dave, like, looking for a beat, trying to find a beat, is a lot like, for me, when I do graphic design, and I have to find a font that I that I feel works with whatever design I'm doing. Like it's a feeling. Like you just you kind of you know it when you see it. And for Dave with the beats, he knows it when he hears it. He gets slack jawed. He stares in the distance. He doesn't choose the beat. The beat chooses him. And he finds a beat. And he goes into the booth. And he's trying to like throw some words out. Just trying to. Just trying to riff on the beat, trying to... Very, very funny. Very, I would imagine, very true to how a lot of people write and come up with with music and lyrics in general, whether it's rap or normal music. Especially for rap where you get the beat and then you... I would imagine most rappers get the beat first and then try to put lyrics on top of that. I don't think it goes the other way too often. Uh, it might, but... You see him trying to throw stuff out, which is horrible, which is not good. You're also in this scene seeing Els kind of being jealous of Gata because Dave wants Gata's like on his way to hang out or whatever. And Els is like, why are you always hanging out with Dave with Gata? Dave's, you know, well, he's he's cool. He's different. He's a different flavor. It's clear. Els is trying to be like, oh, it's because he's black and it's not black. It's, Els is black. It's not about race. It's about flavor. And Gata has a unique flavor. M more so than every other character in this show. So it's clear. He comes from a different background. He's had a different life. That would, that would impact somebody and, and change them and mold them into a very unique type of a person. And that is the person that Gata is. Always positive but uniquely his own person. And L's a little offended, a little, like, threatened, maybe. You know, he's losing his friend. He's losing his friend Dave to this other guy, Gaeta. A little jealousy going on. So after that, Dave goes to, to get some food with Gaeta. They go to a, a cheesesteak place where Dave gets noticed, gets recognized, at the counter, when they're ordering their food by the guy working at this cheesesteak place, he saw the video that YG recorded of him doing his, his freestyle. Which is, you know, it's, it's a f another f interesting scene because most people would just be happy to have been noticed for their work. To, you know, ha a fan of their work. Amazing. But, of course, Dave, because he's always in his head, he's always, like, highly critical, overly critical about everything. The guy says, it's like, oh, you're like a real rapper. I didn't know you were like a real rapper. Which, for me, I could understand that. Like, if somebody saw, like, a, a podcast that I do or they see my art, you know, like they they see me like at a, I don't know I don't I, I don't really know the the analog the 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 similarities to my life, but I could see that it's like oh you're 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 really doing the thing that you really do. It'd be like Dave going to his girlfriend, seeing seeing her like uh you know teach a kid how to color in the lines or whatever. It's like oh you're you are a real teacher. It's like, no shit, I'm a real teacher. So, of course, he gets offended. Dave gets offended about 
overlooking the compliment completely and just like focusing on the fact that previously that guy didn't think Dave was a real rapper. Uh, then Gata and him, they sit down, they have their, their, they're eating their, their Philly cheesesteaks. And they have a little God talk. Dave, not religious, but also coming from a privileged background. Whereas Gata, maybe not as privileged, probably grew up with not only, uh, you know, people who are not privileged, but, all, you know, many people around him living very difficult lives. And it's very common for people living difficult lives to really focus and lean on and, and rely on religion to help get them through. Which I can understand that. I talked about Station Eleven yesterday, which is a, a limited series. And one of the themes of this series is the power of stories and how people can take a story and use it for good, for comfort, as a way to uh, help relieve their stress. But then people can also use a story to manipulate and to just use it to get rich. And I think from Dave's perspective, because he's had such a privileged life, he's never had to see the other side of the coin. He's only seen the side where people use it to take advantage of other people, which is something very similar to me. I'm not a religious person. I'm not a big fan of religion. But I do understand that at times, in desperation and during hardship, that it is comforting to have something like religion, like God, to lean on in those moments. So it's an interesting little conversation that they both have, showing their different perspectives on a thing that's very divisive. Uh, one of the things you're not supposed to talk about over a meal is religion. Breaking rules. Uh, so they have their little God talk over their Philly cheesesteak. Um, cut to uh, Dave at Allie's apartment with Emma. They're sitting, Emma and, and uh, Allie are sitting on the couch, and Dave is, now he's kind of fleshed out this this rap, right? He got the beat from L's earlier. He's He's fleshed out lyrics finally, right? Some of the gibberish that he was speaking speaking on the mic while after he got the beat you know has kind of evolved into this rap and he's could be the first that could be the first moment that dave has ever rapped for ali we don't know i'm assuming and it wasn't like it was like you know a rough he wasn't going all in on it but he was he was doing it join inspired disorder plus today Head on over to inspireddisorder.com slash plus to join. Membership includes members-only discounts and deals. You get access to the Ray Taylor Show completely ad-free, as well as bonus episodes. You get access to the complete live painting archive. You also get access to every single podcast ever produced by Inspired Disorder, hosted by Ray Taylor. You get access to Ray Taylor's personal blog as well as the opportunity to ask me any questions so if you want to start a podcast you're into art ask me anything and so many more things are being added every day to inspire disorder plus so sign up today become a member head on over to inspiredisorder.com slash plus and become an inspired disorder plus member today and they liked it Allie probably a little bit more measured in her in her response, Emma, definitely more of a fan of the song. Then Dave asks if it's funny. They both say yes. And he's like, well, is it too funny? Because there's like, he's got, like Dave is trying to maintain his brand as a comedic satirical rapper. So even though he's doing this thing, it's still got to fit within his voice, quote unquote voice. Right? It's got to be his style. But it's a very fine line. You can't go in to a funeral of some kid you've never known, you've never met, and go in roasting the people. Like you gotta, you gotta walk a very fine line when it comes to comedy and funerals. Uh, and and they're not necessarily sure if he crossed that line or not. Uh, but they both did enjoy it. So at least like 
in preparation for this first, his first performance, at least he's nailed down the song. But what about that back knee? I know you're asking about that. So we cut to Dave and Mike naked in a bathtub, like uh, bobsled style, Mike behind Dave, and Mike smearing on some cream, really concerned, writing in a notebook about you know, what Dave's diet has been, really trying to nail down how to get rid of this back knee from Dave. Like, really, a closeness that I've never had with any friend. I don't even know, if I had back knee, I don't even know how comfortable I would be with a girlfriend helping me with it. Maybe, I guess I would. I probably would be fine with it. But to have that level of friendship sharing a bath, helping me with my back knee, which I don't have back knee, but let's just say I do for this argument. I don't know if I would do that. But still, despite the fact that they're super close friends and able to do that thing, you know, to, to really get, get down and, and dirty in the same bath water, uh, there's still the, the humor, the, the classic joke involving a squirtable fluid of any kind, especially fluid that is somewhat thick and creamy looking squirting over over dave's head as mike pretends to come over him with soak him and come with this uh shampoo bottle or whatever it was there's always the joke it's not just the back knee it's the back knee and hey it's it's not really i'm not really coming all over you dave but the friendship is solid the friendship is there mike and dave it's, it, there's a closeness there that, I, I mean, I don't think anybody could ever could ever be broken. Now, we're at the school, right? He's setting up. Dave's nervous. He got himself a new stage jacket. Excited about it. Doesn't look good. Els isn't happy with it. Dave doesn't know. He's trying to go over like what he's going to do during the performance, how he's going to get the crowd interacting with him, uh, how loud things are going to be. Like he's he's like overthinking everything because it's his first time. It's overthinking everything, which is necessary. I mean, the first few times you do something, you have to figure out how you want to do a thing. When there's when there's unlimited potential. Uh, it's it's hard to to nail down what you want to do, uh, but as you go, you kind of strip things away. It's all about stripping things away. And he hasn't even he's hasn't he's barely starting that process of how he wants to present himself on stage. Dave, angry, frustrated. It's his first show. He doesn't know how it's gonna go performing for all these kids this is his first show in his rap career is performing a memorial for a kid he never knew very stressed out overthinking everything thankfully his buddy mike is there dressed thankfully they're both dressed mike helps talk him down bring him down to reality he's like listen you're gonna have a ton of other shows that are going to make up for this one show but this is a show for them this isn't a show for you this is a show for the parents this is a show for the people that that miss this kid and it's not about you and he really really good out of out of everything so far in the show i mean gata on some level trying to bring dave down to a more like realistic level at least showing him the the other perspectives of 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 life but mike really bringing him down to bringing him down to earth uh talks him down uh calming him down despite the fact that dave just went off on l's because l's forgot the graphic just really uh, just shitting on l's completely it's like all you have to do is hit play and then bring the graphic and you just brought the graphic. 
so you're seeing Dave shitting on Els, shitting on somebody that he should he's collaborating with that's helping him. He's very selfish, Dave, in his own head, highly critical about everything. Everything from the original play about the environmentalism to to now, especially now that it's his own performance, he's highly critical of it. Uh, but Mike brings him down, grounds him. And just as everything's about to pop off, you got you got Emma filming everything. You have Gata walking around live streaming, complaining about the Wi-Fi. Really trying to promote. Gata's like great at like promotion in in some ways. Social media, hey, what's up? Hype man. So you're seeing them go around. You're seeing Mike calmed him down. He's like, okay, I'm, I'm peacing out. I'm going to do a bunch of drugs in the, in the car. So he leaves. He doesn't want to be there for it. But just as things are about to start, somebody new shows up. Macklemore himself. Mackle- the other rapper that this kid loved. Macklemore shows up. And, of course, Macklemore is a professional. He's like, I, don't, I got a whole catalog. You just do whatever you do. Like, clearly... The complete opposite of Dave when it comes to making sure everything is correct and right. Like, Macklemore's probably played all of the worst venues and clubs and, and shows uh, known, to, known to man. You know, you're a musician, you're coming up, you're playing all the open mics, you're playing all the, the things where people don't care about you and aren't there to see you. So now that he's, he's reached this level of macklemore uh, it's nothing for him to just come in. It's like, yeah, I'll do a show. I'll go all night. It doesn't matter. Instantly bumping Dave. <laughs> and Dave, the guy who at first it was like dragged cr- kicking and screaming to do this performance. Uh, so he gets bumped by Macklemore. And I love it, this show, because it always like ends, at least the first season, it ends like the last line of every episode is, is such a good punchline. To like just the life of Dave. Where Macklemore's going on, he's starting his show, and the jacket that that Dave took off because it, you know, the stage jacket that he got for his performance, Els wasn't into it, so Dave took it off. And his girlfriend Allie sees it, you know, just draped over his arms, like, oh, I like that jacket. Where did you get it? And the last line is Dave telling her that he got it at a thrift store which is the big hit from Macklemore. Hilarious kind of last line of the episode and a great episode where we're seeing Dave just not a great person, you know? He's, he's neurotic and uh, overthinking and overanalyzing and, and kind of being unfair to people that are around him at times. But we're also seeing people like Mike, his his definite friendship, you know, jumping in the bath with him to help his back knee, helping him talk him down. Like he was the only person to really talk Dave down to earth from his his high horse that he was on. You get to see Els, who's creative. He made a bunch of beats and the one that he, you know, Dave was going to use. You see Dave kind of develop a song, perform for his girlfriend for possibly the first time. We met Emma for the first time. Get to see a little bit more Gata. So that was it. That was season one, episode two, Dave's first. A really funny episode. And uh, yeah, just another step in the journey of Dave Bird as little Dickie. Until next week. New episodes of The Ray Taylor Show come out every single day. Subscribe on YouTube and everywhere our podcasts are found. Binge the full week over at InspiredDisorder.com slash plus. Buy Ray Taylor Show merch over at InspiredDisorder.com. And follow the show on Instagram at Ray Taylor Show. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Peace. Out! Today is the day where you wake up and you realize that everything that you've been dreaming about, everything that you've been wanting, every goal and wish and hope that you've ever had can become real. Dreams can come true. What you manifest in your mind, you can bring to reality.